Hello and welcome to this discussion of the Israeli-Palestinian war. What should the United States do? Okay, so what we're doing here is we, I mean me, <laughs> what I'm doing here is I'm talking about what the United States position should be with the, this war. So I have Keystone Light. Yeah, I'm drinking that. No bitter beer face here. Um, it's certified kosher too, huh? interestingly. Um, well, uh, so uh, we had these uh, Hamas attacks on uh, October 7th, 2023, and people say, uh, aren't you shocked? I hear people saying this. Aren't you shocked by what happened? If somebody asked me that, aren't you shocked by what happened? I would say, you know, I'd be shocked if they hadn't done something like that. I mean, when I see you say, well, these Palestinians did all these things. This is shocking. It's not shocking to me. I would. When people act the way I expect them to act, I'm not shocked, okay? When they do their natural born, when they behave in, an, in their natural born way, I say, okay, well, that's what I would expect from them. Okay, you know, so uh, no, I wasn't shocked at all. Um, just them being them, you know what I mean? Them being them. So, um, but th that being said, We hear Net, this uh, Israeli prime, prime minister Netanyahu talking big, you know, oh, we're going to do all of this unprecedented response. It's going to be big. It's going to be the next big thing. But, uh, you know, I was watching that Saturday morning. And I said, well, he talks a lot. <clears throat> he talks a big game. You know, he, he's more talk than action, really, like a lot of American politicians, you know, mainly trying to cover his rear end. Um by uh, allowing the greatest catastrophic intelligence failure in the history of Israel to occur. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> why are you talking big? Maybe you should resign for allowing this to happen. But anyway, uh, I'm not involved in Israeli internal politics, nor do I have any interest in their internal politics. David Cassidy says, hey, Ron, what's on tap? Hello, David. Uh, Keystone Light, nothing impressive. Okay, so... Uh, so the, the main point of the video is not, uh, oh, what's going on over there? What are the details of this conflict? You could find that by just looking at the news. Uh, no, the main point of the video is what should America do? So we know Joe Biden is sending, a, you know, predictable, sending an aircraft carrier group over there to stick his nose in it, you know, KS is not our business and no funding to either Palestine or Israel. Okay, so he's doing a predictable thing. You know, the United States has been funding, bankrolling Israel since 1948 and giving them aid and comfort and everything. So now, but um, David Cassie says thumbs up. So uh, I, you know, I have to approach this from my normal approach, which is non-interventionism and um, anti-war, pro-peace, pro pro-American uh, pro uh, positive interaction with all countries in the world. So uh, from an American standpoint, in my uh, ideology, the anti-war position, the anti-war position would be to not be involved at all. But now the United States has made promises to Israel. They say one of our great allies, who, by the way, spies on us more than any other country. But that's, you know, with that, we, that's kind of common knowledge. Uh, people are not your ally because they want to help you. They're your ally because they want something from you and vice versa. So um, anyone who thinks America has become allies with all these countries around the world in order to help them. If you believe that, you got a lot to learn. 
Okay, the United States government never became allies with any country in order to help them. The United States became allies with any country in the world, any and every country in the world, in order to help ourselves, the U.S. Okay, you don't get allies to help them. You get allies to help you. In other words, you get allies to use them to advance your perceived national interests, okay? And when trouble breaks out, you may or may not help them, depending on how it suits you, okay? Now, if you believe otherwise, you don't know the reality. Uh, you can look through history. That's the way it works. The, the British did not become France's ally to help France. No, they became France's ally in order to use France to advance British national interests, okay? You can look at World War II for, as a perfect example. Yeah, drink more beer, uh, says Michael Arsenault. Um, Great Britain did not become France's ally because they had this um, altruistic idea to help France. They became France's ally in order to use France against Germany, okay? And they encourage, or if you want to be more realistic, they pressured France to go to war with Germany on September, what was it, 3rd, 1949, uh, 39, not 49, 1939. And they were like, we're tight, we're together to defeat Germany. Now, when things went bad and their battle plans did not work out and were poorly done and everything, and they, and they lost the initial battles of the war and France surrendered, then the British showed how much of an ally they were by immediately attacking France. Okay, why did they attack France? Because France was no longer useful to them in their pursuit to get Germany. So they attacked France because now it was useful to attack France to get Germany. Okay, so this is why people have allies, not to help the ally, to help themselves. So the United States, in my opinion, should not have any allies because we don't need to be using other countries to advance our national interests, because in my opinion, our national interest do not, does not reside in setting up a world empire, okay, along the lines of the British Empire, which was established, really the modern British Empire established in 1689 in order to control and rule the world, which they still do to a large extent. Now, so, but that's, but I don't, I'm not involved with the British Empire. I don't care what the British, oh, I'm sorry, they call themselves British Commonwealth today. Or I'm sorry, the Commonwealth of the Nations. Whatever they want to call themselves today, I do not care. It makes no difference to me. I do not live in the Commonwealth. I am not a member of the Commonwealth. I do not recognize King Charles as the King of America, and nor do I recognize him as such as King, uh, oh, I'm sorry, head of the Commonwealth as such in that role, okay? So I'm not involved with that. It means nothing to me. Pennsylvania is a commonwealth. Yes, it's not part of the British Commonwealth. Okay, um, used to be. I was simply using that as an example to lead into the main Point of the story. So the United States, very stupidly, in my opinion, decided in 1940, 45, but really in 1939, with Roosevelt, imperialistic uh, Freemason, New York politician, international banking guy, whatever you want to call him, New Dealer. He was a dealer. Now, uh, he decided that, uh, and his distant cousin, Theodore Roosevelt, agree, would have agreed with that. And their compadre from Virginia, Woodrow Wilson, would have agreed with that. That the United States should do like Great Britain and take up the white man's burden. <laughs> like they're doing this like, to help you, you know. We have to raise up, lift up, and civilize and Christianize these little brown brothers, as uh, William McKinley so eloquently called the rest of the world, our little brown brothers, specifically talking about the Philippines. So, uh, you know, Roosevelt, 
who the U.S. government and major media today so idolizes, decided to, um, well, more or less run the world. So uh, we're going to have this great American exceptionalism, and we're going to bring democracy and freedom to the rest of the world, whether they like it or not. And we'll do anything we can to make the world free, including dropping atom bombs on them and all of that. All right. So, uh, but this is something I don't support and uh, never, I, well, maybe it, when I was young and I didn't know, you know, when you part of a cult, you don't know until you get deprogrammed. You know what I'm saying? But um, so coming at you here live on the internet from a, a non-interventionist neutrality perspective, non-intervention, don't intervene. Now, some people like to say you're isolationist. You, no, I, ne I never said anything about isolating myself from the world. People should travel around the world, do commerce around the world, trade, have amity, friendship, like George Washington said, by all the countries of the world. Be friends with everybody. We have no animosity to these other countries. It doesn't make any difference to us. Massachusetts and Virginia are also commonwealths, says the weak greatness, right? which is another word for a state. <laughs> there are states. Louisiana is a state. Virginia is a state. Louisiana is a state. Massachusetts is a state. Louisiana is a state. Pennsylvania is a state. Louisiana is a state. Kentucky is a state. Okay. Began reading The Son of All Fears by Tom Clancy just a week ago. Feels a bit different reading it now after the attacks. Okay. Um, don't know anything about that book, but I know he's famous as a writer. Fiction. Okay. Okay. Um, Bud Light now, but that's it. I did a taste challenge earlier. So, yes, I was de devoted in the 80s, laughing out loud, de evolutionized. Okay, deprogrammed. Okay, uh, let's be honest, it's all to do with religion, which most conflicts are. Says so Adam. Well, it's actually a real estate conflict, it's not really a religious conflict. I don't think there's too many Palestinians sitting up at night worrying about. Jews going to a temple on Saturday, and I don't think there's any Jews sitting up at night worrying about Arabs praying to uh, whatever they pray to on Friday. You know what I'm saying? They don't care. They're like most people. They're not worried about other people. It's a real estate conflict. There's two different groups that want the same land. See the problem? They want the same territory. And uh, They've been fighting over it since, uh, well, the days of uh, Abraham and Moses. Uh, so, like, uh, yeah, they were fighting over it back when the uh, Palestinians were pagans. And they're fighting over it now when the Palestinians are, uh, or, well, you know, no, still basically pagans. But anyway, there are, there, there's some Christians there in Palestine, West Bank, and Gaza. A few Catholics, not too many, got driven out by the pagans. But anyway, so let, but let's get off of that, because I don't care about, uh, it's not a religious discussion. And uh, whatever these people want to uh, believe in, you know, whatever pretend God they want to worship, it, it's, it makes no difference to me. Whatever convenience store they want to run, I do not care, okay? I would rather it not be in the, in America. If they want to run convenience stores in Belgium or France, I would prefer that. I would encourage them to go to Spain, Italy, and Belgium to run convenience stores, honestly. But anyway, uh, like I told somebody last night on the phone, I said, I'm pretty sure we could find other people to run convenience stores. But that being said, uh, I have no horse in a race, and I'm not taking sides, and I have I do not take sides in this. I think that's obvious, but um, so my position is the United States should be 100% neutral. Now, we've made promises, we, not me. I mean, I don't endorse imperialism, empire, and this uh, this world control program, peace through war. I do not support the peace through war program that the United States has pursued since 1940 under Roosevelt. I do not support peace through war. Okay, I don't support it. 
All right. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't support baiting Germany into World War II. I don't support baiting Japan into World War II. I don't support baiting North Korea to attack in 1950. I don't support baiting North Vietnam. I don't support baiting Iraq in 19. I don't support any of that. Okay. I don't want people to think I support any of this stuff. Okay. I do not. Okay. And let it be known that I don't. Uh, I don't want to see American boys going overseas to fight wars that European wars should be, European boys should be fighting. Unlike Roosevelt, who said that but didn't believe it because he was known to say things that were not true, <laughs> like, you know, his whole life. But anyway, um, but the United States has made promises to these people. Oh, we're behind you. Oh, we're going to help you and all of this. Don't know why he did that. I don't know what the point is. I mean, I kind of get the idea what the point is because no one who has control in America and influence in media and finances and whatnot, that would make sense. But okay, so you give your word, you give your word, you say you're going to help somebody, then you help them. Okay, you help them say, okay, we're going to help you. But now we reach in a point and say, okay, we're going to help you this time. Although it may drag on for a hundred years, because you know that's how y'all operate, or how it operates. But the main point needs to be to begin to disengage. Say, look, we're going to disengage. We have a new guy running the show. It should be me, but maybe it'll be Donald next year, uh, starting up uh, in 2015, 2025. But maybe I could be his advisor and say, look, you got bad advisors. Let me advise you. I'll tell you what to do. It'll work out. It'll be great. It'll be the greatest thing ever. You'd be the greatest president in the history of everything. But look, I'm not in control. I should be. But anyway, let's just say I was. I would say, okay, we're going to begin to disengage. That means we're not going to help you anymore. We give all this foreign aid. We give all these billions of dollars every year to all these countries. We're going to start, but I'm, I'm not a radical. I'm not an extremist, as you well know. So I would say, look, we're going to start cutting back. Every year that goes by, we're going to cut back 10%. 10%. 10 well, that will bring us down to zero eventually, right? So over the years, you could expect that we would give you 10% less support than we gave you the year before. There will be 10% less troops in South Korea. The next year will be 10% less than that, 10% less than that. Eventually, it'll be like two, two American soldiers in South Korea. Okay, that's not going to help you. That's not going to defend you. you got to figure it out on your own. If you call us, we're not going to answer, okay? So the next time it goes down, you're going to get a busy signal. No one's coming. Well, they might come from somewhere else, but they ain't coming from the USA. So that would be the policy, okay? Say, guys, we love you. We wish you the best. We 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 one hundred percent support you in Israel. We got your we got your back in a in a, in a sense of uh, best wishes, okay? We wish you the best, but don't call us for help because none will be forthcoming, okay? Uh, we hope you do well. We know you will do well. Hope you do well in the Olympics and uh, and chess tournaments around the world or whatever you do. Um, and that's the way it will be. And then whatever you want to do with the Palestinians, whatever they do with you, uh, whatever Cyprus does, whatever Azerbaijan does, whatever Kenya does, whatever Chile does, whatever Canada does, whatever... Uh, uh, the Pitcairn Islands do, whatever Great Britain does, whatever Madagascar does, whatever India does, or Australia, or uh, Russia, or Ukraine. We are all uh, behind you in the sense that we wish you the best of luck and uh, best wishes. God bless you. But we are not giving you any more money. Those days are over. The gravy train has ended. Our military is being pulled out of your country. If you want to buy, we'll do cash and carry. I, I agree with that, cash and carry. You want to send us cash, gold-backed. You want to send us cash, we'll send you supplies. 
buy it from our military industrial complex who tries to control the government and actually does. But um, you can carry it back on your ships. If they get sunk, that's kind of like the risk of war, you know. So we'll be a friend of everyone and an enemy of no one, okay? Assuming you don't attack us, which I don't think there's any countries looking to attack us anyway. So um, we'll be friends with Canada. Hey, Canada, great country. You have poutine. You eat all that food. You spell flavor with O-U-R, flavor. We will love you and we'll be your friend. And if you ever get in a war, we won't help you. Okay, so Mexico, we love you. We like enchiladas. We like piñatas. We like going to charro days. And you need to stop sending all these people across the border, but we about to crack down on that in a way that you would never imagine. But anyway, we'll be your friend. And if you get into a conflict, don't call us because the phone will not pick up. And same thing with Jamaica and the Bahamas and every other country on the planet and in outer space. Don't call us. We're not helping. Israel. So people ask me that. Well, what if they were attacked? I say, well, if they were attacked, I would wish them the best and I would hope that they would do very well. So that would be the policy. Neutrality today, neutrality tomorrow, neutrality forever. Okay. And that's a fair policy. I think everyone can agree with that. You should agree with that. Friends with all, enemies to none. Okay. So you say to me, what should the United States do to help Israel? I would say you could pray for them. Tell them, I hope things go well for you. If you call me, the phone will be busy, unless you want to talk about television shows or different types of beer that we could drink. Okay, so that, that would be the, the case. Now, the United States has made promises, so you want to fulfill the promises and then get out and immediately. So um, you see what's in my hand? See, this is what's in my hand. And this is how much money I would give to Israel going forward. Mm -hmm not to mention every other country on earth, that exact amount. And that's how you run a country. And that's how we need to run the United States. So, all right, let's look at the comments. So it's, it's not a religious conflict, uh, no matter what people think. Uh, it's, a, it's a real estate conflict. Uh, you guys in the United States, seem, this is Adam Blackburn. You guys in the United States seem to have the same problem as we do in the United Kingdom. Get involved in every disagreement, even if it has nothing to do with us. Yes, because the United States follows Great Britain. You see, the British decided in 1689, we're going to run the world. We'll be the world manager. Basically, we will manage the entire world. You say, well, that's a rather audacious idea. Yes, but they, they, uh, they did try to do it. Now, remember, 1689, 1689, the United States was part of the British Empire, Commonwealth, British Empire, whatever term you want to use, whatever sounds better for you. Uh, so the United States were trained in that mindset. You see, you had people in Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York. That was their mindset. They were trained that way. So when they broke away from Great Britain and became an independent country, they continued that mindset. I'm not saying people in Alabama had that mindset or people in Louisiana or Florida or North Carolina, but people in New York, Boston, and those type of, you know, Pennsylvania or, or Philadelphia, they had those areas they had that mindset we have to we have to not only finance the world we have to control the world and we have to control all the other states including louisiana alabama florida north Carolina, and with you know what they did in 1861 to uh enforce that idea to control other people so they they copied their british uh parents their heritage to control the world. Now, has it worked out very well? Well, if you think World War I and World War II and the current Cold War since 1944 is working out real well, 
I guess it's worked out great. If you think that those have been fiascos, then maybe it hasn't worked out so well. Uh, I'm worried about the influx on immigrants coming from this region, says Butch Willie. You're not the only one. Okay, especially after this incident. Yeah, well, you know. <clears throat> Wings and Pizza says, problem is Americans have died, so politics will become number one. Uh, yeah, if you have Americans living around the world, Americans will get killed in conflicts. That's inevitable. Could be, who knows, a conflict between Kenya and Uganda, a conflict between Israel and Palestine, a conflict between Papua New Guinea and uh, Borneo. But... Um, That doesn't mean you have to get involved in a world war over it. You could, uh, there's ways to handle those kind of problems. You say, okay, so some people have killed Americans. You don't have to send an aircraft carrier battle group out there. You could say, okay, these guys who are more like pirates than a country. Okay, they're not really a country. They're like pirates. They're like organized crime figures. Okay. And they do what they do because that's their nature. That's what they do. That's what they do. That's what they've always done. Okay. Well, you, th there's the thing, you know, in the constitution about letters of marquee and reprisal. So the Congress could issue letters of marquee and reprisal where you certify privateers, private individuals who can go out there on their own, like a bounty hunter sort of situation and handle the situation however they see fit. And whatever, whatever, uh, whatever, uh, <clears throat> if you want to call it rewards, <laughs> they ac they acquire, they can keep them. They have a certificate, so they're not going to get in trouble. No per prosecution, you know. So um, you issue these guys a license, a, a letter of marquee or in reprisal. And they could probably handle it much better than this big, overly encumbered uh, uh, aircraft carrier battle group. And then they can do it without any kind of restrictions and handle the situation quite well. And um, plus, they, there's a profit motive, and they can uh, acquire a lot of uh, pr prizes, which we'll call prizes, you see. So... Um, that's a simple way to do it. They should have done that in uh, 2001. Instead of having this uh, fiasco invasion of Afghanistan, we all know how well that worked out. Um, you issue letters of marquee and reprisal. The Congress could give these certificates. There's always people out there. There's these uh, gung-ho guys out there. You know they got these kind of adventure seekers out there looking for uh, uh, adventure, fame, and fortune, or maybe not fame, but fortune, you know. And so they could go out there and do their thing. And you say, here's the people that did, here's the people on the list. Like, here's the people on the list. And you got the certificate. So once you got the certificate, you don't have to worry, a uh, uh, guy. You could do your thing, you, you, and your, you and your compadres, your company, or however you want to construct it, it doesn't make any difference to us. And uh, I, I think a lot of people would go for that. Um, a spirit of adventure and it wouldn't be any kind of draft or sending people out there to die on a battlefield that they have no interest in is and people that want to be out there and uh and be, could be very effective and, and you could do that so um yeah i don't know why they ever got away with that i got away from that i don't know why they ever got away from that i don't mean away with that away from that i meant to say so uh, that would that's a maybe an older way of doing it they would do that in the uh, middle ages in the early modern ages they would say, uh, oh, this guy over here in uh, Algeria, he was uh, going after women and children, and he's holding hostages, and he's demanding all these things. But here's, we offer in letters of marquee and reprisal, if you want to take that bid, go do your thing. We don't want to hear about it. You know, don't, don't report back because we don't want to know about it. You understand, but you got the certificate. And you can keep whatever you, you get on that earnings. And then they go out there and handle the problem. 
It's easy. It's done. Simple. No problem. And then the country's not involved in it. You don't have the people involved. The country's not involved. The country can say, we're not involved. They did that. So free agency. You wanted to play the game. They ended the game. They, 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 uh, you got checkmated. No problem. Okay. Uh, the problem is, okay, American, all right, so uh, Rocket Man says, so we have, so we become Switzerland. Uh, yeah, we become Switzerland. Switzerland has been involved in, how many, take a guess, how many wars has Switzerland been involved in since 1815? Anybody want to guess? How many wars has Switzerland been involved in since 1815? Well, they were involved in a war then because it got invaded. Sometimes you get invaded, but um, Butch Willie says zero, zero, right, right. Switzerland has been involved in no, they weren't involved in World War One, they weren't involved in World War Two, they weren't involved in the Cold War, they weren't involved in Korea, Vietnam, any of these ancillary wars, the Franco Prussian War, none, nothing, peace. So if you just said World War One, terror, bombing, killing. You go to Switzerland, be quiet, like right out here right now with birds chirping. So peaceful. Go to Switzerland in 1943. World War, bombing, killing everywhere. Go to Switzerland. Peaceful. They didn't take sides. They didn't have a horse in a race. No one attacked them. Okay, Justin says couldn't. Let me let me see if I can figure out these comments. Justin says couldn't have cared less about the soldier who died. They cared about that oil and that wani and influence in the regions. That wani. I don't I don't follow what you're writing. Okay, Wings and Pizza says, I agree. Stay out of it. Looking at the current leadership and its approval rating, they're probably going to cave to whatever the popular opinion of the day is. Yeah, they're very weak. Uh, Netanyahu and his gang, they're public relations guys. That's what they are. They're pro they say talkers. But well, like I say, I'm not involved in Israeli internal politics. It makes no difference to me. Left wing, right wing, middle wing, wing. I don't care who they elect. They cared about that. Okay, money. Justin says money. Okay, yes, money. All right. Uh, yeah, money. All right. Don't know what that means, but no illegal immigrants, too, I'm sure. Well, of course, we don't support that. Adam Blackburn says Switzerland is one of the most peaceful countries in the world. To be honest, the United Kingdom and the USA, USA should take note. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you know, Justin, the average soldier grunt did not. Some of what y'all are writing, I'm not following. Just join. Where are we at in the conversation, says Mr. R. Well, we're at the end. I said that the United States should stay neutral. I knew you predicted what I was going to say, and that's what I said. Uh, well, we made promises. We. I don't mean we. I didn't make them. I mean that government in D.C. made promises. So you should keep your word, you know, but get at, start disengaging. Begin to disengage. Get out. Just get out. The military industrial complex is sure pretty bloodthirsty. They aren't making enough money from the Ukraine-Russia conflict. They are bloodthirsty and uh, they make a lot of money off of killing and war and bombing and empire and everything. And the politicians and companies would have never made all the money that they did if we didn't go in those wars. They're ruthless. Uh, the migrant crisis is gonna be insane, bro, with all the climate change with all the climate change <laughs> and the things going on in the parts of the world, like the Middle East and Africa, they're all going to come to the Western countries. Well, we'll see about that. Uh, yeah, Justin, they come here and misbehave. <laughs> yeah. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I said this very clearly. When people act the way that, when people act the way that I expect them to act, I'm never shocked. Okay, remember that people say, Are you shocked by that? Were you shocked by that riot? 
or that mass, uh, you know, like this group invasion of a, a jewelry store where they stole all the stuff, like this mass uh, shoplifting thing. I so said, I'm not surprised. I wasn't shocked because when people act the way that, I, when people act the way that, that I expect them to act, I'm not shocked. I would be shocked if they didn't act that way. Okay. I mean, if it's hot in the summertime, I'm not shocked. I'll say, well, it's hot. It's summertime. If it's cold in the winter, I'll say, well, it's cold. It's wintertime. When certain people act the way they, way, the way that I assume, I assume that they're going to act, then I'm not shocked. I mean, you should be like me. Just expect the usual. Um, so let's look at the last comments. I'm going to close it out. So uh, Wings and Pizza says, uh, just don't understand how anyone thinks we're going to make a difference over there without doing something drastic. It's been thousands of years of infighting over there for various reasons. Well, yes, but the main fighting has started since the Balfour uh, Declaration of 1917, you understand. It really got started in 1917, which is only 106 years ago. Uh, but once again, that's related to the British Empire and all of their uh, instigations and uh, mendacity, you know, whatever you want to say, all their uh, involvement in everybody's business or making deals with the right people that got the money, you know. Don't worry, Justin, you're not the only one. The United Kingdom is like a dumping ground for illegal immigrants and they get out in five-star hotels for the free while our veterans are homeless and on the streets. It's all wrong. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, England, the United States are not run, those are not countries run by people who have the country's best interests at in their heart. These are countries run by conspirators who have other people's best interests at heart or nefarious interests at heart, conspiratorial interests at heart, okay? Now, there was a guy, Donald, who wanted to change the game board. But when you try to change the game board, they're going to come at you. You know, you just look around. Anybody that's trying to change the game board, they're going to come after you. So when Donald said, no, there's some kind of crookedness involved in this. We got people running the United States that's not trying to run it for America's best interest. They're running it for conspiratorial reasons, financial reasons, all kind of uh, evil chicanery or um, international finance, international finance capitalist reasons, imperialistic reasons. So he comes along and, oh, well, there's the biggest uproar against Donald because He's going to rock the boat, baby. Don't rock the boat, baby. We have to keep the empire running. And so, as you would expect, I expected it. I don't know why people were shocked. Back in 2015, I said, they're going to come after this guy with the worst ferocity that you ever saw. This will be the most hated person on earth. This will be the most evil guy in the world because he's trying to stand up against the empire. And you got a lot of ignorant Americans that follow ignorance, <laughs> you know. Uh, so that's the situation. Now, um, if I got famous and was standing up against the empire, it would be the same result. Say, let's say I got famous and I'm standing up against the empire and preaching the same stuff. Neutrality, making peace with Russia, getting it, getting out of all these foreign conflicts. Well, the same thing would happen. Pretty soon, you hear some woman saying, "Oh, he assaulted me in 1996," and you would say, "Well, why you didn't talk about that since then?" Oh, well, I, I was too traumatized. But now, that's what happened. Oh, he made ridiculous comments in 2011 in a van, uh, on, and some guy recorded it. He made locker room talk in a van. <laughs> you say, well, I hear this at work every day. People say ridiculous things. What, what, what is remarkable about this? 
you know, but that's what would happen. And then they would say, oh, he's bad. He's bad. Uh, he uh, he talks big. Um, he's pompous. He needs to diet. Uh, his women have facelifts. Uh, he, uh, well, we'll think of whatever other thing that negative to say about him. It would be the same thing. Now, if you're going along with the program and you're bo- building up the empire, building up the international finance capitalism, they're going to say, oh, he wanted to help the world. He wanted to make a, uh, uh, he wanted to bring us four freedoms. He wanted to help the poor. He wanted to help the little man. <sighs> like Franklin Delano and uh, Eleanor and John Fitzgerald and Linda Baines and Jimmy, you know, and Ray and Ronald and George and Barack, you know. So if you see what's going on, then you can realize what's going on. But you got to get you got to um, stop looking through the, uh, the smoke. You got to see the world clearly. But that that comes from education, reading, learning observing, thinking, you got to think. Some people are good at talking, but they're not good at thinking. I've met so many people on, on the internet, online. They're good at talking. Well, they could talk, 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 get in a hangout with them. They talk all night. But think, they don't think. They don't know what that word means, thinking. Don't know anything. Talk all night, don't know a thing. I say, what about this? Never heard of it. Talk all night, don't know a thing. So anyway, so that's the point. Neutrality today non-intervention tomorrow and neutrality forever. Now, do I think that's going to happen? I seriously doubt it, but I'm, I'm an optimist. I'm not a negative person. I don't go around like a lot of people saying, oh, it's terrible. It's the end of the world. I was reading the book of Revelation the other night. Oh, I know. I watched a DVD. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. You know a lot. I'm not like that. I don't do that. I'm not going around saying give up. There's no hope throwing the towel, I'm waiting on the rapture. This is not the channel for that, okay? I'm not not part of that. I'm saying positive things. Be positive. Be hopeful. We can, well, you know, theoretically at least, we cannot, we can change things. Don't listen to these people that's going to tell you there's no hope because that's what what they want you to believe. If you believe that, then you'll just be like the rest. Of you say, I'm just going to the, I'm just going to the Bengals game. I don't know. I'm waiting on the rapture. And you'd be up there, yay! The Bengals won. That's great. Okay, last comments. Sorry to <laughs> okay. Uh boy, we got a lot of comments. Got a lot of viewers here. Oh boy. That's a good way of putting it. I'd love to see the headlines if the last administration was in charge. Oh, well, you know what those would be. Uh, I'm a I'm a reform United Kingdom fan. Their policies, their, you mean they, their, T-H-E-Y, apostrophe R-E, right there. Policies are actually similar to what Trump's was in the USA. Oh, the reform UK, I don't know what, what reform UK is. Donald was in the club, but he left, and that's why they're after him. Right. When you split with the program, then the program's coming after you. <laughs> you know, can't split with the program. The looting you were talking about was in Philadelphia, not too far from where I live. Oh, right. Was I shocked? I think we know the answer to that. Like I said, when people act the way they act, when people act in the way I expect them to act, I am not shocked. <sighs> Are you saying Donald went against what George Carlin would call the real owners of this country? Oh, you could say that. Sorry to catch this late, but thank you for all you do for the community, Jay. Your knowledge is invaluable. You're welcome, Jason. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your support. And he also said he didn't want wounded vets in his parade. They made him look bad, and he's called 
dead soldiers suckers as a vet myself that's messed up yeah well uh you know i don't i i i i i didn't say that uh what did i just say earlier that he says he says crazy things he's he's gauche he's a uh, loud we need more dignified people Dignify people who support the international finance capitalism. Dignify people who support the empire, who don't upset my sensibilities. And I understand that because it, it's hard to um, it's hard to break the paradigm. You know, when you're brought up in a certain when you're brought up in a cert, certain conditioning, you can call it conditioning, a way of thinking. Then when you look at the events of, of 1775 or 1861 or 1917 or 1941, you're only conditioned to think a certain way. So you have to think, oh, well, I went to the World War II Museum, so this is the way it is. Well, that's the way they present it, you see. So when you when you think a different way, it causes what we call cognitive dissonance which is a, a disturbance in your mind. And it's very upsetting. So it's more comfortable. And I agree with that. And I understand it. It's more comfortable to just go with the program. You know, and you could be on Fox News saying, thank you for your support. You know, thank you for your support. They say that I, I, if I had a dollar. Oh, thank you for your service. I'm sorry. If I had a dollar every time they said that, I have so much money. I could go on Fox Networks. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. They're so virtue signal. They're so virtue signal that it's uh, it's unreal, you know. But that's what that's a comfort zone, and we need to be in that if we want to not challenge the paradigm. Okay, so Kevin Johnson said this country needs to be led by Christian leaders. That's how this country was founded. Was this country founded by Christian leaders, Kevin? What do you think are the consequences on Americans if America keeps involving itself in every conflict, says Little Cynic? Well, I think the consequences would be very terrible. Killing, you know, kidnapping, hostage, whatever, you know, same old terribleness. Rocket Man says, Kevin, the founding fathers included freedom of religion. If we are Christian, if we are, I'm, I'm reading this verbatim, folks. If we are Christian nation, that's no different than Saudi Arabia. No separation between between church and state. We are not the Middle East. <clears throat> I'm not sure what that means, but going on. Okay, Justin says, anything that could benefit us possibly with our own intervention and involvement. Don't know what that means. I'll have to re-watch this live because I joined late as well. No problem. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you can always watch the replay. I know you, I know you know the truth, but if you were to speak it, you would lose your YouTube channel. Well, you know the expression, discretion is the better part of valor. So people need to be smart. Well, Jesus said this, gentle as a lamb. You need to be gentle as a lamb and as wise as a serpent. Now, this is not me. It's not me talking. Jesus Christ, God himself said, be as gentle as a lamb. And I try to be gentle. You know, I try to be gentle like a lamb, but as wise as a serpent. Some people are out there like goofy. They're out there making videos and they goofy. And then they say, oh, what happened? Well, you goofy, you know, you got to be smart. You got to game the system, so to speak. Founders were deists. So it's jacked up. Well, I'm not a big founding father kind of guy. You know, you don't hear me out here on July 4th up there trumpeting all of that. I could, I've made videos about that. I made videos about the uh, revolution. You know, they're out there. They're in the playlist. So, uh, you know, when you say, oh, I swear 
You know, these people, you go out there and say, I swear to God, I will support the king at all times or whatever, you know, whatever the oath is. I support the king and his heirs. And then you're out there conspiring against the king and his heirs. That's making me think that what you're saying is not so virtuous. So, you know, but we don't want to go into that. But uh, if you, you know, I mean, if you start talking about the American Revolution, then everybody gets upset, you know, because they conditioned and they say, oh, oh, no, I used to like you, but I disagree with you now. It's like, and I'm saying, you never, you never took time to think a little bit. We could do that together. We could walk together. I'll walk with you. I'll walk and think with you. You say, oh, I'm going to block you. Okay, because you don't want to think. Vicious Rage says, I always think, why do, why do these things have to happen in my lifetime? But remember, these things have happened throughout millennia. It say, yeah, it happened in everybody's lifetime. All because Adam and Eve ate the apple. Well, it wasn't an apple. Well, it could have been an apple. If you read the Bible, it just say a fruit, a, tr a fruit from a tree. But in popular culture, it's an apple. But it could have been a pomegranate. <laughs> you know, I mean, but, uh, you know, people say the apple. So, yeah, whatever. That's not the point. It's that they did not follow the guidelines, basically. But I do believe in the Constitution that they put in place. I do believe in the Constitution, more or less. Right. Nobody can disagree anymore and be friends. It's mind blowing. I know Wings and Pizza, I deal with this all the time on social media. These people will be like, oh, you, they'll say stuff like, you mean a lot to me. I love your videos. I've been watching you for years. And they'll send me a friend request. And I'm like, okay. I don't know these people. I'll, I'll be their friend. I don't know who they are. And then later on, they're like, oh, I want to be in alcohol legs. Look, I drank Miller High Life. I'm like, I had that many times. Or they'll join Rock and Roll Club. I love the Beatles. I love Queen. And I'm the same. You know, I'll say, okay, yeah, I'll, I got some Queen albums. But then you know what's coming because they're like real emotional, volatile people. But you don't say nothing. You know, you just watch them. And they say, what? You said what about politics? And I'm like, yeah, but I'm talking. I'm, and then you respond to them. Well, I'm talking about a non-interventionist policy. See, what I mean is, and then they block you and unfriend you. I was like, wow, they're really dedicated, dedicated to idiocy, you know. But uh, that's what you got to deal with. You know, volatile people that don't know a whole lot. Don't want to know a whole lot, or hooked up with some party, could be in England with the Labour Party or a conservative, which is sort of like Socialist Party B, or they could be in America with whatever whatever group they involve with, all wound up. You know, when you're dealing with wound up people, what do you do? They're wound tight, you know, and they they volatile and they oh oh everything with them is like like could you imagine going through the, your life every day like this? Like everything is like this, you wound up oh. Oh, what? What'd you say about? What did you say about Bernie Sanders? Man, I think I have a nervous breakdown being like that. And they want to be, they got to make comments on everything on social media. Well, let me tell you what I think. And they're so volatile. And I'm sitting back here thinking, what? What are you talking about? And it's like their whole life is a storm, you know? And so you can't, be a true friend of somebody like that because they're so volatile. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, last comments. I'm drinking a Miller High Life right now. <laughs> Laughing my anatomy off. Says, look, Miller High Life. I like that beer. Okay. No one can disagree anymore and be friends. It's mind blowing. I know. I can't get over it. I never, I, I, I'm not used to dealing with people like, well, I guess I'm, I am used to dealing with people like that now over the years of dealing with these maniacs. But uh, when I was growing up, I don't think I dealt with people like that. They probably were like that. They didn't have social media, so they couldn't be like that, you know, until well, then when they started Facebook and Instagram and MySpace, then they could be crazy, you know, and put it on the Internet. Uh, Rocket Man says, I just like your reviews, man. I don't care about you personally. No offense. 
And okay. And I like some of what you have to say, but that's it. I don't agree with everything you say, but it doesn't mean I hate you. Well, that's good because I'm not running a cult. You see, I'm not running a cult. If I ran a cult, that would mean you have to agree with everything. You have to be under my control. You have to serve me. But if you're just watching the videos because you like different beers and you give your comments, that's what uh, normal people do. You don't know the person. You say, oh, oh, I had Samuel Smith's Imperial Stout. Oh, that stuff was great. But I'm not too sure about that organic pale ale or that organic lager. Let me tell you why. Okay, that's what normal people do. It's not like you say, I endorse you or I don't endorse you or I I'm going to be your friend or I'm going to block you. It's like you're just talking about a product. I don't know who you are. You don't know me. We're talking about stuff. That's our contact point, okay? I get it. I'm not insane, though. Mr. R says, I appreciate these history live streams. They're very rich and important. You should create a list of books that people need to read that will help them understand what's really going on. Well, that's true. And I just finished reading a book, second reading, called uh, The People's Pottage, The People's Pottage by Garrett Garrett. Garrett, G-A-R-E-T, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, I think. It was a series of essays. 1944, 51, and 52, I think. Uh, great book. Everybody should read it. Fabulous. He died in 1954, but it's a great book. I haven't been able to find a tall can or a pack of Guinness near me, says Wilson. I'm sorry to hear that. Social media and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. I think it's the way people use it. It's not really the media. It's the people on the media. <laughs> No Jesus, no peace, no Jesus, no peace is jacked up. Okay. Damn, Cynic, where you live, the sticks. Yes, actually, Mississippi Delta area. Oh, yeah, I've been there. Uh, Ripo, I'm out west. We have everything for the most part. A lot less consequences being emotionally volatile behind a keyboard than face-to-face, -face, says Eric Granlund. I agree with that, but people are wound up like they're crazy. You know, you get on the internet, they're like they're crazy. Volatile people. I mean, I didn't understand. When I first got on, like, you, uh, Facebook, YouTube, like, in 20, what was it, 2010, whatever, I just thought I was talking to, like, regular people, you know, like you talk in real life. I was like, well, I don't agree with it. I didn't know these people were crazy. Because, like, uh, Brian Wilson said in that song, I, Hang on to your ego from 1966 with the Beach Boys. He said, they come on like they're peaceful, but inside they're so uptight. He was talking about people like that. They come on like, hey, man, what's going on? You want to hang out? But they're crazy. You know, they like wound up, nut, nut case, mental case, head case. Uh, yeah, I used to live in college. I used to live in college town. I used to live in college town and they had crazy selections everywhere being here. There isn't much choice. It's humbling. I didn't realize how spoiled that was. Okay. Watch the Secret Mysteries of America's Beginning series, says Jack Duck. Okay. Burley Sullivan says, you, Jack. And then Mr. R says, thanks for the recommendation. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, we could read comments all day, I guess. Uh, so the main point, the main point is what should the United States do as far as the Israeli war with Palestine? The main point is stay neutral. Don't intervene. Don't send a dollar. Don't send a single weapon. Wish them the best. And we should do that with every other country on earth. In case you think I'm playing favorites, I'm not. You say, what about the Ukraine war? Stay neutral. What about Greece versus Turkey? Stay neutral. What about uh, some group of people in Central Africa versus some other group in Central Africa? Stay neutral. What about Israel, Palestine? Stay neutral. <laughs> what about the Moroccans and Western Sahara with that rebel group. Stay neutral. The answer is going to never change, folks. It's never going to change. <laughs> What's your next beer review? Oh, uh, you know, that's a good question. I got to go buy some more beer. I don't really have any new beers. But I'll go shopping, you know. There's always something new. People want to send me beer. I'll say, send me beer. 
There's beers I can find everywhere around here. Thanks for this. I'm going to rewatch it and enjoy a blonde ale with a hot Cuban sandwich. Mm, that sounds good. Have a nice rest of your day. You too. Sounds great. Thanks for watching. It's been over an hour, but it's been a productive hour. Just right on an hour of, hey, and anytime I can get on the internet and do pro-war, uh, pro anti-war, non-intervention, neutrality, that's a good thing, man. Cheers to you, Drewski Booski. He says, cheers, Ronald, Ronald Doe. All right. Bye, everybody. Keep up the good fight. Do the right thing.